I'm Zoe and this is Serialization TV. Tonight I'm outside the Brixton Academy for the Concert for Care show. Some of the acts include, you might have heard of them, Gary Barlow and the Kaiser Chiefs, but I'm here for one special guest. She's a young girl born in London, from South London, and her name is Speech DeBell. Hello. Hey, you bumped into me in Brixton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the um, Concert for Care, how was it? It was a brilliant, it was a brilliant gig. Um, it's a nice, lovely big stage, nice crowd. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was vibes. Good reception. Yeah. So let's, I mean, let's go back to the beginning, really. It's been an amazing journey for you, winning the Mercury Pies Award. Did you ever think that that would happen? Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's why you won. And like, what was the feeling like when your name was called up and you went on stage, all that kind of thing? Um, I think I, w I was confident beforehand. I yeah, said I wanted yeah. to get a Mercury. I said that it was when I was making the album actually, and you know, when I was we was in the studio, I was with Wayne, and I was saying, you know, this is me. This is going to be a Mercury, you know. Um, uh, and I think you know when Jules Holland he was presenting it, uh, when he started speaking, that was the only time I, I was doubtful. Um, but anybody would be doubtful in, 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 in that, and especially the way he'd done that speech, it was, it was horrible. I know I'm never going to be on Jules Holland's show, but I don't care. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, you've yeah. done what you've done, you know, and, it, and it's amazing. Yeah. Talking about your album, is it true to say you made some of it in Australia? I made most of it in Australia in about two weeks in Australia. I was there for six weeks and we started, Bad Boy was the first song we actually got mm. concrete and that was after the fourth week. So the album was made in about, mostly in about two weeks in Australia. Um, on the smallest budget you can really make an album on. It's, it's so weird that you made it in Australia because it's still got such a, a British gritty feel to it. Yeah, I think it's, it's the makeup of me. Um, you know, my opening line of finish this album is my quiet observations on a bus. Um, it's where I, I, I got my inspiration from. It's where I continue to get my inspiration from. Um, so, you know, working week, I'm talking about reading the Metro every day. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when I was just looking for information about you, there's so much positive news about you, even about your album. There's not one um, critic that I found that kind of slated your album. Everybody was just saying it's kind of like a, brush, a, brush of, a breath of fresh air and it's just something that's really needed now for the UK market. How does that feel? Because it's kind of big shoes to, to fill that's, you know, at the beginning of your journey. I think it's... Um you know, I was talking with my friend, um, my guitarist over there actually, who I've known for years, um, when we was in Glastonbury. We was in Glastonbury earlier this year, and it was the first ever festival. It was the first ever time we were going to be on television, and it was the day Michael Jackson died. Um, we, were, we were putting up our tents actually, while we kind of, we heard in the wind literally that Michael Jackson was dead. Oh, no. And um, I it think, for, yeah, 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 definitely. And I think it was like, at that moment, we kind of, you know, it was him that said really that, this is not. This is not. This is not going to be normal. Do you know what I mean? We're doing something completely different here. You are. Um, the biggest inspiration in me musically left the day I got in. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I think. But that's the power of Michael Jackson, though, because he just he leaves a trail, a trail of kind of really aspiring and talented people, and you're one of them. As you said, as he left, you you know you started to become so mainstream. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's such an un unbelievable an unexplainable influence um, in society. You know, Michael Jackson isn't just a singer. Uh, Michael Jackson is like the sun or the moon. <laughs> He's totally unexplainable. We've never, as uh, far as I'm concerned, we've never been to either one of those two things. And Michael Jackson is just like that. We're never going to really understand his greatness. And, um, you know, I think what, what, what I've been doing since I've got here. Um, there has been some 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 negative press um, for from people who, who think that I shouldn't have got the Mercury's or something. What have they like said? You know, just as I shouldn't have got it. My jeans, my 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 boys' jeans ain't tight enough. They're kind of loose. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, my 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 nose ain't white. You know. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a lot of stuff that is just un totally just, you know, ignorance. But I think what people have to recognise is that I'm making history 
Um, I won a Mercury Music Prize Best Album of the Year. I'm the first rapper to ever do that. Yes. It's yeah. never been a rapper to yeah. stand up before. Female. Female rapper, exactly. Uh, first female in a couple of years. Not, you're um, not even 30 yet. You know, you've right. done so much in such a small space of time. Yeah, definitely. Even when we go on the road, I'm going on the road with a double bass, a guitar and drums, and I'm rapping. Uh, so I think people have to recognise that. I think people don't see what it is until until later on. And it's like, oh, hold on a minute, she was doing that, mm. but I don't mind. Maybe this people means. haven't yet kind of un can understand what you're doing because I would say as well that your lyrics are like poetry. Yeah, definitely. It's like neo-rap. It's uh, rhythm and poetry, definitely. What rap is. Uh, uh, my good friend who's a poet told me that rap is rhythm and poetry. Let's quickly talk about your outfit because I love it. It's like a kind of, I don't know, 60s style play suit. Who's the designer? This is like a pimping Pat Butcher right now. Yeah, <laughs> pimping Pat Butcher. I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm wearing trainers because I was up and down. You caught me when I was having some cake. <laughs> um, but I'm meant to be wearing heels with this. My stylist will be upset with me that I'm wearing trainers. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is like, I've got the Pat Butcher look going on and I'm feeling it. Is fashion very important to you? Do you kind of, do you have somebody telling you what to wear? Or are you kind of very influential on what you wear? Oh, uh, no, absolutely not. I have somebody telling me what to wear. Fashion has never been my strong point. Mm. Um, I think fashion is a, not a lot of people's strong point. People have to recognise when they see people on television, they have somebody telling them what to wear, fixing their clothes. When, when I'm doing something, when I've got my stylist and my hair and makeup with me, I'm literally standing like this with my two hands Just in the air. Like, poli magic. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like I'm getting uh, police <laughs> patted down and they do their thing. Um, if it was up to me, I might be in a tracksuit. <laughs> So in the UK, our music industry at the moment, who else do you think are, are big things? Um, what's that? He's kind of big, Daniel Merriweather. Oh, Daniel Merriweather. Yeah. I'm Seri. Seri, Seri, for serialization. How are you? Nice, bye. That doesn't happen often, does it? So that, that, that was perfect timing. Perfect timing, talking about someone influential and Daniel Merriweather walks past. Crazy, who else? Uh, well, to start with, I'd say, um, like, in this country? Yeah, in this, let's start in this country and um, kind of other people as well. Uh, let me see, Dizzy Rascal, very influential. Love Dizzy Rascal, Rascal, not only has he had so many number one songs and makes really good pop songs, but he's also an entrepreneur and a businessman. Mm. Titchy Stride is also a businessman. He has a, a T-shirt company. Those are the things I think are influential. People, being a rapper and being a singer isn't anything to aspire to. I don't think so. Um, you're going to have lots of people there that are going to want to aspire to be here. No, no, but it's not the only things to aspire to. There's a lot of other things to aspire to as well. Being an art architect, uh, being a scientist, being somebody, being a doctor uh, who saves lives every of day. Course, do you know what I mean? Course. I think those are things to aspire to. Um, but, you know, so not just music. I don't want to... Anytime we get arts at Christian, I never want to just say music because yeah. it seems like... Um, so you talked about Michael Jackson being very influential to you. So it doesn't have to be a musician. Who else would you say has kind of, you know, helped you create and, and do what you do? Uh, probably the biggest influence on this album was Michelle and DJ Cello, um, who has an album called Bitter. Uh, it was when I realised I, I needed to make a conceptual album. And I think that's the reason why I'm one of Mercury is because I made mixtapes. I made, I rapped on beats, but Speech Therapy is a conceptual album. It's a body of work. Um. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us here at Serialization. And if you could tell anybody at home, you know, who's watching you and, you know, wants to become, wants to kind of do what you're doing or even just to kind of get the influences, what would you say to them? I say to them, you know what you need around you? You need a, a if you're, if say you're a rapper, you're like me, for example, um, get a producer that understands the way you think and the way that you see music and view music and get them to help you bring it out. Um, have somebody else who plays an instrument around because if you want to make music, you need to have somebody that understands music and get yourself a lawyer. Those were the words of Speech to Bell for Serialization TV. Babe, thank you so much. We've just finished speaking to Speech to Bell and what an amazing girl she is. So talented and so intelligent. In the words of Speech to Bell from one of her songs, I've got a half cup of hope and I'm sipping it slow. This is Serialization TV. Take care.